So we have this beautiful picture of the hydrogen atom, which has been developed. We can describe it with the Rydberg equation. We can describe it using the Bohr theory. But the same arguments apparently don't work for the helium atom. And it's only got one more electron, so something else must be going on. A bit of a clue is that if you look at neon, then this is completely unpredictable. There are lines all over the place. I've got no idea where they're coming from. Calcium is even worse. If you go to sodium, then apart from some details, the sodium spectrum looks very similar to the hydrogen spectrum. There's one electron in the outer level. So it's gone back to being a one electron problem. So apparently all of this complexity is arising because of electron-electron interactions within a single shell. And to have a hope of predicting these, we're going to need a more sophisticated theory than the Bohr model of the atom. And that more sophisticated model was developed by Erwin Schrödinger, who's the founder of what was called wave mechanics and what we now call quantum mechanics. In the Schrödinger atom, the electrons occupy orbitals. And these orbitals are described by a particular kind of mathematical equation, the wave equation. It turns out for the hydrogen atom, Schrödinger could solve the Schrödinger equation exactly. And to solve the Schrödinger equation exactly, he ends up with these things called the wave functions. And they're described by three quantum numbers. The principal quantum number, the azimuthal quantum number, is what the n number does. The principal quantum number is tell us about the energy of the orbitals. It's what the azimuthal quantum number does, is tell us about the shape of the orbitals. It tells us whether we've got an s orbital, or a p orbital, or a d orbital, etc. But that's not enough to describe this idea of wave functions. We need a third quantum number, which has the sign m subscript l. And this is referred to as the magnetic quantum number. It's called the magnetic quantum number because its consequences are most easily observed in the presence of a magnetic field. And this is the thing that determines the direction of the orbital in space. So, for example, if you've got a p orbital, then the p orbital can point in the x, the y, or the z direction. And the, that x, y, or z comes about because of the ml value. So these quantum numbers can only take a few specific values. n can take any value from 1 up to infinity, in principle. For every value of n, l can take the value 0 or 1 or 2 up to n minus 1, but not beyond that. And then for every value of l, ml can take the value 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, up to ml is plus or minus l. So we have all of these different orbitals which exist in our hydrogen atom. And they're there in our hydrogen atom, but in the special case of the hydrogen atom, all of the p orbitals and all of the d orbitals associated with n is equal to 3 have the same energy. They're degenerate. So in the hydrogen atom, you do not see those two transitions as separated in energy. So there's only one line associated with the n equals 2 to n equals 3 transition. But it turns out, as we'll see in just a moment, that in these more complicated atoms, this degeneracy is lifted, and then you can see all of these other lines, and that's why these spectra become much more complicated. This is what the Schrodinger equation gives us when it's coupled with these three quantum numbers, is the shapes of the atomic orbitals for the hydrogen atom. And the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom, that's a problem with one nucleus and one electron, is exactly solvable. So we know exactly the shapes of the atomic orbitals associated with the hydrogen atom. As soon as we get to helium, we cannot solve the Schrodinger equation exactly. We can make incredibly good approximations to it, but it doesn't have an exact solution. But these shapes, the s orbital, the p orbital, px, py, and pz, these arise from solutions to Schrodinger's wave equation. So they're mathematical entities, but because they're exact, and we know that Schrodinger's equation exactly predicts the spectrum of the hydrogen atom, we know that these are correct. And then from that information on the hydrogen atom, we infer pretty much everything we know about chemical bonding. And as you all know, the s orbitals are spherical, and if, as you go up in n, they have a kind of an onion-like structure. p orbitals have this dumbbell shape, and they can point in three directions in space. Right? So that's the l is equal to 1, and that's the ml is equal to minus 1, 0, and plus 1, giving the directions in space. 